What you're about to see is the discovery made by the YouTuber Connor Kelly in the McCoy Mine in Lander County, Nevada. The McCoy Mine is a silver and gold mine at the elevation of 5,400 feet. Connor arrives in a group of four via motorbikes, and upon entry of the cave, everything seems normal at first. But as they get deeper into the cave, Connor notices something reflecting the light of his flashlight. As they get closer, they realize what it is. Oh. Oh, Jesus, what the fuck? It's a shoe. Oh, Look, it's okay. like a fossil. It's a pile of shoes. But to make it even more disturbing, it's a pile of children's shoes. Mixed in with the shoes are various bones laying in the pile. Connor then looks further down the cave, and you can see skeletal remains of some type of animal, possibly a coyote or deer. The shoes all appear to be older, with 80s styling on a lot of them, and obviously whoever or whatever put them there deliberately made a pile out of them. Connor said they contacted police on the matter, but they didn't seem to take it seriously or care. The bones could easily be explained away as the cave being some kind of animal feeding grounds, but the pile of shoes isn't as easily explainable. There's always the question of if this was a prank to scare people, but this honestly seems like it would take a lot of effort for a prank or failed viral video attempt. A more disturbing explanation would be that this is or was a dump for abducted kids, where their shoes would be removed for whatever reason and dumped there, possibly as trophies. An example that could be compared to this was in the early 1900s in Wald Lake, Michigan. There was believed to be a sick and cruel man who began murdering kids in the area, and after he would dispose of the bodies, he threw their tiny shoes up into the branches of a tree. Eventually, the man was caught and people found his tree ornamented with dangling shoes of dead children, almost as if it were one big trophy to him. Whether this is something similar to that, or just a weird prank that somebody spent way too much time on will probably remain a mystery. But one thing's for certain, there aren't many possible explanations for this. If you're claustrophobic, this story will make you uneasy. This is the tragic tale of John Edward Jones, who was a 26-year-old medical student and family man. When he was younger, he explored many caves with his father and his brother, so he'd been exploring caves practically his entire life. But one cave proved to be too dangerous even for John, the Nutty Putty Cave. This cave was known for its notoriously narrow spaces. They were first explored by Dale Green in 1960, the cave is located southwest of Utah Lake and 55 miles from Salt Lake City. John entered Nutty Putty Cave at around 8 p.m. on the evening of November 24, 2009, a few days before Thanksgiving. John, his 23-year-old brother Josh, and several other friends and family members all decided to explore Nutty Putty Cave as a way to spend time with each other ahead of the holiday. John was married, had a one-year-old daughter, and was attending medical school in Virginia he had come back home to Utah to spend some time with his family for the holiday, making the story all the more tragic. About an hour into their expedition into the Nutty Putty Cave, John decided to crawl through a tight passage that he mistakenly thought was known as the Birth Canal. Unfortunately, this passage was way tighter. He inched his way into the narrow passage head first, moving forward using his hips, stomach, and fingers. But within minutes, he realized he'd made a terrible mistake. He knew that he was more or less stuck and had no room to turn around or even wriggle back out the way he came. He had no choice but to try to press forward. He tried to exhale the air in his chest so that he could fit through a space that was barely 10 inches across and 8 inches high. But when John inhaled again and his chest puffed back out, he got stuck for good. Josh found his brother, and in a tragic turn of events, as he was pulling at John's calves, John slid further down the shaft. What's worse is that now he was stuck upside down with one hand beneath him and the other wedged above. At this point, the two boys started to pray. Eventually, Josh made it back to the surface to call for help. But even once help came, John was still trapped 400 feet into the cave and 100 feet below the Earth's surface. Getting the people, equipment, and supplies down that far took over an hour. Due to John being stuck upside down, time was of the essence. In an upside-down position, a healthy, young person could live for a few hours, but probably not much more. The body is adapted to work with gravity, not against it. 
Blood flows the way it does with gravity's help. Our organs sit where they are because of how we stand. So John's blood pressure was falling dangerously low, and his organs would start to crush each other if he didn't get out soon. This position would also require the heart to work incredibly hard to continuously pump excess blood out of the brain. The first rescuer to reach John was a woman named Susie Modola, who arrived at about 12.30 a.m. on November 25th. At that point, John had been trapped for three and a half hours. Susie introduced herself to John, even though all she could see of him was a pair of navy and black running shoes. John said back to her, Hi Susie, thanks for coming, but I really, really want to get out. Over the next 24 hours, more than 100 rescue personnel worked to free John from the depths of the nutty putty. The best plan they had was to try to use a system of pulleys and ropes to try to free John from his position. Rescuers tied John with a rope connected to a series of pulleys, causing him to scream in pain due to a lack of blood in his lower body. Everything was ready, and they pulled as hard as they could, but suddenly and without warning, one of the pulleys failed. Rescuers believe the pulley came loose at its anchor point in the cave wall. The rope and pulley operation failed, and the rescuers had no other viable plans. John was trapped. With no hope of rescue and his heart having suffered hours upon hours of strain due to his downward position, John was pronounced dead of cardiac arrest shortly after midnight on the evening of November 25th. A week after John's death, the Nutty Putty Cave was sealed off for good. Perhaps the scariest part is that they never recovered his body, and his remains will stay down there forever. This one, while being kind of creepy, is also pretty interesting. A YouTuber by the name of Water Skipper posted a video exploring a cave in Oregon, called the Maller Cave. On the surface, it looks like a pretty normal cave, until the bleachers on either side come into view. Now, anyone would wonder what exactly bleachers would be doing in a cave. One might assume some kind of secret underground rituals could be going on in there. And in a place as creepy as deep in a cave, these would probably be some sick rituals. However, the cave is owned by the Masonic Lodge of Burns. For decades, the Freemason group in Oregon held their meetings in this cave, cleaning and maintaining the area. But obviously a group holding private meetings in a creepy cave is going to create bad rumors and conspiracy theories regarding both the Masons and the cave itself. One of those theories claiming that the cave hosted satanic rituals and devil worship. The cave has been closed off since 2019, when local Masons put up a gate at the cave entrance in order to stop the vandalism and graffiti that was plaguing the site. Kenny Veach is someone I've talked about before but his story is perhaps one of the more chilling stories having to do with caves. Kenny was a YouTuber and caver who disappeared in 2014 after attempting to explore a cave he nicknamed the M Cave, which he reported hearing unusual noises from and found it suspicious as it was located six miles south of a top secret airbase. As he began to enter the cave, he claimed his whole body began to vibrate. The more he went into the cave, the worse the vibrating became. He said he suddenly became very afraid and hightailed it out of there. He uploaded this video to talk about his experience with the cave. Um, I gotta still go over another ridge and then go all the way down uh, a big crevice that's real narrow and gets kind of scary. Uh, and uh, I'm looking for a cave that I, I found and I didn't, have a, I didn't have a sidearm when I was here before. And something about that cave just spooked me out of all the caves I've ever gone in. This one just made my body vibrate. The closer I got to it, the crazier my body felt. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to go in there right now, but I'm coming back someday. And I talked to some people on YouTube and I told them, hey, I'm coming out here, you know, because they, they kind of called my hand on it. So I don't know if there's going to be anything to it, but it, it might be interesting. Uh, if I can find it, I got to relocate it. And this is a big mountain range I'm in. Of course, the internet being what it is, people made fun of him and accused him of making the whole thing up or at least fabricating the story. Basically, Kenny was pressured into going back to the cave a second time, even though he was afraid to enter it the first time. Kenny gave in to the pressure and returned to the cave, and he has not been seen since. His phone was found in an abandoned mine entrance, but no body was ever found. Kenny was an extremely nice and likable guy, making his disappearance and likely death all the more tragic. People believe that given the close proximity to the airbase, Kenny was actually murdered by the government. Proponents of this theory believe that the M-Cave Kenny discovered was an entrance to some kind of top-secret government facility due to its close proximity to Nellis Air Force Base and Area 51. 
They believed that the vibrating sensation Kenny felt while near the cave was a defense mechanism to keep civilians from entering. Under this same theory, Kenny saw government secrets within the cave and was kidnapped by US soldiers when he emerged. A YouTuber by the name of Abandoned Minds 11 posted a video of what he believes to be the M cave that Kenny described, and it's pretty credible. The cave appears to have been walled off and sealed, preventing access inside. Okay, I made it up here to the entrance of this M cave. There's the one side of it. It comes down and then goes back up there and down. Now, this doesn't look to be very deep at all, and it looks like they were trying to wall it off. There's stacked rocks right there, as well as behind me here, like right there. The YouTuber finds multiple items on the floor, like planks of wood and a beer bottle with no label, possibly a bottle Kenny was carrying. Most interestingly, he finds an Area 51 warning sign, which actually may back up the theories that this was some kind of entrance to an underground facility owned by the government. But this is all speculation, and what actually happened to Kenny is still unknown.